This is KGW News at 11. Good evening and thank you for joining us for KGW News at 11 on this election night. I'm Laurel Porter. This May primary is unlike any we've had before. The pandemic has impacted every aspect of the election cycle. Candidates couldn't hold rallies, debate in person, or canvas neighborhoods. And even tonight, the winners held their election night parties online. Things are even different here at the station. Dan Haggerty joins us from the newsroom. Dan, what a night tonight. Absolutely. I, can I say it's just nice to be anchoring a show with you again. Also it sure here, is. <laughs> here at 11 o'clock. But Laurel, it, normally behind me on an election night, it's bustling back here. But a majority of our folks working from home tonight. Of course, our reporters are keeping in touch with campaigns from their home offices. So we are going to check in with Pat Doris and Maggie Vespa soon. They're following the major races and issues to impact Portlanders. And you can see the results running at the bottom of the screen throughout the newscast here and check at KGW.com if you want to learn about a specific race. Now Portland has three city commission seats right now up for grabs as well as the mayor's office. Currently right now Mayor Ted Wheeler is ahead with 52% of the vote followed by Sarah Ayanna Roan. It's not clear yet if this is going to go to a runoff. Now Wheeler would need to stay over that 50% mark to avoid a runoff election here and it's still too close at this point to tell if that's going to happen or not. It does look like Carmen Rubio has won the first position seat on city council. She'll be replacing Amanda Fritz, who decided not to run for re-election. The next two races will likely go to a runoff. We're talking about Loretta Smith. She is leading the way right now for position two, followed closely by Dan Ryan, then Tara Hurst. The top two candidates will advance to the runoff and in position four, similar story there. This is a very close race, a three way, uh, three way kind of race between the incumbent Chloe Daly, you see on the left, Mingus Maps and former mayor Sam Adams. Same thing here. The top two will advance. Let's turn thing over, things over to Pat Doris now. He's been following the races for Portland's mayor and city commission and joins us live from his home in northeast Portland. Pat. Well, Dan, it has been a historic night, actually, with the first ever Latinx elected to Portland's city commission. And it has also been an interesting night for the mayor's race, which may or may not be over. Let's start with the mayor's race. Incumbent Ted Wheeler is trying to become the first two-time mayor for Portland in 15 years. He has a huge lead and appears to be very close to securing enough votes to get 50% plus one and avoid a runoff. But the tallies are trickier than you might think, and some results are still trickling in, so it's too close to call as of Tuesday night. Regardless, he is looking to the future and the big problems to be solved. And I'm determined that we once and for all change our antiquated form of government to a more modern form of government that's more effective, more accountable, and more representative of the public we serve. The secondary, obviously, is the homeless crisis. In particular, it's focusing on the chronically homeless population. And I'm hearing loudly and clearly from the community that business as usual won't cut it. But challenger Sarah Iinarone says not so fast. She believes when everything is official, Wheeler will not have passed the threshold to avoid a runoff in November, and she is convinced she can win that one. We're in a field that had 18 names in it. We had to battle uh, status quo bias and incumbency. I think it's actually much more damning that an incumbent in the middle of a crisis didn't get a mandate for 50% with a clear win. Um, over half the people said, this isn't the guy we want. One race that is settled involves Carmen Rubio, a history maker, the leader of the Latino network in Oregon, and now the first Latin X to join the city commission, winning enough votes to avoid a runoff in November. I feel just so thrilled and honored and excited and hopeful. It's just been an incredible ride. Um, you know, when I started this campaign back in the summertime, um, it would it felt very daunting and a long road. And so here here we are. And um, it just feels wonderful to be finally um, at this point. It has been an interesting night of election coverage for both, I think, the reporters and for the candidates, but not for the voters. Our mail in worked just like it always has. Back to you.
Thank you, Pat Doers, live for us in Northeast Portland. Great to have you with us tonight. Portland voters also had two tax measures to decide on this primary. First, voters have approved a renewal of the gas tax. That's a 10 cents per gallon tax that will last another four years. Then there's the Metro measure to fund homeless services. That has passed with 57% of the vote. We want to bring in our own Maggie Vespa now, who's been following that measure closely with a look at how that funding will be used. Maggie? Yeah, Laurel, good evening from my kitchen, my home studio on election night. And you know, your point's really interesting because there's a lot of flexibility written into the measure itself. Basically, it says that the money has to be used kind of under the umbrellas of certain services, like it has to be used for rental assistance or it has to be used for mental health treatment. But beyond that, counties can kind of adjust their budgets as needs change. And officials say they think needs have already changed a little bit, at least because of the pandemic. So here's some of what we heard earlier tonight. Sort of on a victory press conference on Zoom. Take a look. We are super excited tonight. I actually haven't had a chance to step away and experience how excited I am. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll say that um, I'm uh, not too surprised and, and, and believed that our community would be with us. Reps from multiple agencies pushing for Metro's homeless services tax jumped on Zoom minutes after the race was called. We still care about those of us who are most vulnerable. We still care about um, being just a minute, sweetheart. They championed voters' decision to put a 1% tax on high earners and businesses that earn at least $5 million in revenue. In all, it should bring in around $250 million a year to Metro, which covers Multnomah, Clackamas, and Washington counties. Per the measure, the money will then be used to fund things like addiction and mental health treatment, job services, and rent or housing assistance. Specific budgets will be ironed out county by county as needs arise. And Reps note those needs have already shifted because of the pandemic. We may see additional rent assistance dollars going out the door as opposed to some other things. But for the most part, it was built into the measure to respond to economic fluctuation. The revenue will start rolling in next year, but services could ramp up sooner if the counties are willing to front the money. And of course, we know that last point is actually a little tougher now than during normal times, because unfortunately, local municipalities have been really blunt about the fact that their budgets have just been gutted by the pandemic. They don't have lodging taxes and other tourism revenue, and they don't have business taxes rolling in. Still, the groups behind the Metro Homeless Services tax are not letting that get them down tonight. They say this is just a huge win, and they're going to revel in it for a little while. Uh, Dan, I hear I'm throwing it back to you. You are right, Maggie Vespa, thank you so much. Another big race that we are watching tonight was for Multnomah County District Attorney. Mike Schmidt beat out Ethan Knight. It was expected to be a tight race, but as you can see, Schmidt took 76% of the vote at the end of the evening. Schmidt is the executive director of the Oregon Criminal Justice Commission. He's been dubbed as the reform candidate. He says he thinks his win tonight speaks to the growing push for criminal justice reform and DAs who support it nationwide. In a lot of ways, it's, it's made our communities um, smaller because we feel when we hear about somebody getting shot and killed because they're jogging through a neighborhood and the color of their skin, uh, you know, we all feel that. Uh, and I think that has led to an urgency uh, for this reform movement, for recognizing that we need to work on the disparity in the criminal justice system. We need to look for alternative routes and, and, and to get better results. So. And just in tonight, we now know who will face off in November for Oregon's Secretary of State. On the Democratic side, Mark Haas has been declared the winner over Shamia Fagan and Jamie McLeod Skinner. Haas will face State Senator Kim Thatcher in November. She won the Republican nomination tonight. There are many more races, of course, that we haven't covered here at the beginning of our newscast. If there's one in particular that you're looking for, you can head to KGW.com slash elections to see all of the results. You can also find them on your KGW app.